Bam! Mr. Taru, in this video, we are going to find the coordinates of the points on the curve y to the fourth power plus 4 times x times y to the third power minus x to the fourth is equal to 16, at which the derivative, the slope of the tangent line at that point, the instantaneous rate of change, whatever you want to call it, is equal to zero. Or, you know, what are the point of tangencies such that the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero? Many ways you can say this. Well, how are we going to take the derivative of this equation and set it equal to zero or find out where it's equal to zero? Are we going to do it explicitly? Are we going to solve it for y um, in terms of x, say, so that we have a clean dy dx and then take the derivative? I don't think we're going to want to solve that for y uh, and possibly not even probably not even be able to, and it'd be much simpler just to simply do implicit differentiation. So that's what we're either learning or reviewing in this lesson. So we're going to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x, as this notation indicates, and pay attention to the uh, chain rule as we complete this process. So we have y to the fourth power. Okay, well, we're just going to use the power rule. We're going to bring that 4 down, reduce the power by 1. And then remember, we're not taking a derivative with respect to y, we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So we have to finish by multiplying by the uh, derivative of what's inside that function, that original power of 4. Well, that's dy dx. Now, plus, and you can leave the 4 in there or pull it out front. I'm going to leave the 4 uh, as part of this what? This product of two functions. We have a 4x times a y to the third. This second term is the product of two functions, so thus when we take the derivative, we have to go through the product rule, which is going to be, and uh, there might be some slight variations because this is multiplication and addition, which are both functions are commutative, but we're going to do the first times the derivative of the second. So we're looking at a parentheses. First function, 4x, the derivative of the second function, well, the derivative of y cubed is times 3y, bring that power down by 1, squared, and then finish the chain rule, dy, dx, or I'm going to write y prime on the next line. Now we're going to then add that with the, we just did the first times the derivative, derivative of the second uh, function or factor, so now we're going to do plus the second factor, y cubed, times the derivative of the first. And it's the derivative of 4x, so the derivative of 4x or think of it as 4 times x to the first. We're going to bring that power down by 1 and say that we have 4 times x to the 0 power, which is just, you know, 1. And just for teaching purposes, thinking about finishing that chain rule for every single um, step of the derivative, because I don't know if this is a review or the introduction to implicit differentiation, but we're going to finish that chain rule. Um, we had that 4 times x to the 0, and then that times dx dx, taking the derivative of what's inside that power, original power of 1 with respect to x. Well, that's going to just cancel out. So the derivative of 4x with respect to x is just 4. That uh, hopefully didn't just bore you trying to over explain that. Okay, so anyway, minus the derivative of x to the fourth is negative, because it's minus in the first place, 4 x to the third, again finishing that chain rule one more time for teaching purposes, dx over dx, which is going to, again, just simply cancel out. And the derivative of 16, the derivative of a constant, regardless of, you know, what variable you're taking it with respect to, the derivative with respect to is going to, you know, be zero. So we have 4y cubed, y prime, plus we have 4 times 3 is 12 x, y squared, y prime. Here we've got a plus 4y cubed minus 4x cubed is equal to 0. Okay. So now what do we have? We've got our two terms here that both have a y prime in it, and that's what we're solving for, y prime or dy dx. So we're going to move these terms of 
4y cubed minus 4x cubed over to the other side with addition or subtraction. So we have 4x cubed minus 4y cubed. We're going to then take with these two terms, they both have a common factor of y prime, and they also have some other common factors, but we'll, we'll take care of that in a second. So we're going to take that y prime out of each of these two terms. We're trying to find that dy dx, isolate that y prime, so we're going to divide both sides of this equation by this factor. And I'm also going to do some, some factoring here. We have a common factor of 4 in both of these terms. Uh, here we both uh, of these terms have a common factor of 4 and a common factor of y squared. So we're going to have 4 y squared. 4y cubed divided by 4y squared is just going to be y. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. We've just taken out the y squared, so we have 3x. The question asks us to find the points where the derivative is equal to 0, and I've taken up the whole board. I'll have to clean this up in a second. I don't necessarily care where the denominator is equal to 0 because that's where the derivative is undefined. It would help us find locations or points where the uh, tangent line is vertical. But I do want to pay attention to the numerator. So, kind of just going through this work here, we have y prime is equal to 4. This is a difference of cubes. The pattern for this is x cubed minus y cubed is going to be a factor of x minus y. And then multiply that to x squared. We're going to change this sign and we're going to multiply um, these terms of x and y. So we have x squared plus xy plus y squared over 4y squared times y plus 3x. Okay, so that is our first derivative. That is what we're trying to make sure or set equal to zero. So let me get this out of my way. And look what we have going on here. In the numerator, we have a factor which is simply, well we have four. That's going to always be four. We have x minus y. So when is x minus y going to be equal to zero? That's, and this is what is making the challenge of increasing the difficulty or the challenge of this question. It's set up so that you're not going to find, you know, an immediate x value here. Uh, that's why this is a little bit of an interesting question. This is going to be equal to 0 when x is equal to y. Okay, we'll use that in a moment. What about this other factor? Where is x squared plus xy plus y squared equal to 0? Well, really both of these equations have two unknowns and they're kind of independent of each other. Uh, this factor doesn't need to be equal to zero at the same time this factor is equal to zero. Is there a relationship between x and y like we have here where they're equal that the subtraction is zero? Is there a relationship between x and y such that this is equal to zero? Well if we take this, if we take this in the idea that we're seeing this as a quadratic, we could say well a is equal to one and the yellow and green looks very similar. We have um, here we could set that b is equal to y and c is equal to y squared and see if we can't you know let the quadratic formula tell us um, if there's a way of setting up x and y so that such that it comes out to be zero. You might be able to see that this also uh, it, you may intuitively know that it's never going to be true, but we're going to say here x is equal to, think of like a, you know, ax squared plus bx or bx plus c is equal to zero, your quadratic. So x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c.
all over 2a. And you see what's going to happen here. We have negative y, x is equal to negative y plus or minus the square root of negative 1 minus 4 is negative 3y squared over 2. Well, that's just, there's no solution there. It's y squared is always going to be a positive value, regardless of what y is equal to. You take a number and you square, you have a positive answer. And that multiplied by negative 3 means that you're taking the even root, square root, of a negative number, which is going to give you imaginary solutions. Now, you could say, well, why did you bother doing all that? We could say that while this didn't work, x squared plus y squared, excuse me, x squared plus xy plus y squared is equal to 0 when both x and y equal 0. Okay, so maybe this was unnecessary. Maybe we have a couple of um, points, like maybe 0, 0 is a coordinate of a point. 0, 0 is a point where this function uh, has a slope of 0. But is the solutions of 0 and 0 for x and y, which again are what needs to happen for this third factor in our numerator to be 0, is it a solution to this equation? I don't think so. 0 to the fourth power plus 4 times 0 times 0 to the third power minus 0 to the fourth power is definitely not going to be equal to 16. So this is just simply a no-go. Now, we do know that from this factor, the derivative is equal to 0 when x is equal to y. So let's see what we get there. If x is equal to y, oh, okay, so we have y to the fourth plus 4x, which we're now going to do, we're doing substitution here. We're going to, I'm going to plug in y everywhere that I see in x. So we have a 4y, y cubed minus y, not 4, to the fourth is equal to 16. That is going to give us y to the fourth plus 4y to the fourth minus y to the fourth is equal to 16. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. We have 4y to the fourth is equal to 16. y to the fourth is equal to 4. Now y is equal to, I'm going to raise both sides of this to a power of 1 fourth, right, to make that power equal to 1. Power to power, 4 times 1 fourth is 1. And I don't, you can write the fourth root of 4, but 4 is 2 squared, right? So now you're looking at 2 to the 2 over fourth power, or 2 to the 1 half power, which is the square root of 2. Okay, now hold on a second. We just took a fourth um, root, an even root, which means that there's a possibility of having both a positive uh, and a negative answer. So, come back here, a little plus or minus. So, y can take on the values of plus or minus the square root of 2. And since we know that the only way for the derivative to equal 0 is if x and y are the same values, then our points, the coordinates of the points where this curve has an instantaneous rate of change, those derivative uh, slope of 0, is at, dun da 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 in green for some reason, the square root of 2, square root of 2, and negative square root of 2, negative square root of 2. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go do your homework.